Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Kian and here is the Kimu. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create fully functional dial pad within the Figma without using any third party uh, plugins. All thanks to the new feature that the Figma has been released a couple of days ago in the config 2023, such as the variables, the expression writing, and of course the conditional prototyping, which I'm going to use in this video. First, I'm going to create the user interface of the dial pad, uh, starting from the uh, dial buttons and of course the call buttons, and then the overall layout of the page. And at the end, I'm going to define some variables and write some expression to kind of create the logic that what will happen if the user click on the button and how the number will be appears on top of the dial pad. So I'm pretty sure that you will get uh, kind of familiar with this new features within the Figma if you watch this video until the end. Now, without further do. I'm going to select the text tool and write down a number here and then I use the combination key shift A to apply the auto layout on the frame that we made. Then I'm going to fix the width and the height for this frame and then set the width to 60 pixel and the height to 60 pixel as well. Now I'm going to set the alignment to the center and then apply the background color to it. So I will choose a grayish color and then I will add the uh, corner radius to the bottom. Now I will select the number and then choose a bit darker color for the text. Let's rename the frame to BTN. And at the end, I will add a shadow to it. In order to see the shadow a bit better, I'm going to select or click somewhere in the canvas. And then from here in the design panel, I'm going to select a bit brighter background for the canvas. Now again, I'm selecting the button and add an effect and uh, just increase the blur to maybe a made to a composition by clicking on this button here and then create different variant for it. The first thing is that I'm going to make different state for this button. The first state is going to be hover. So I rename the property value to hover and the properties name itself to state. In this variant, I would like to have a bit less shadow. So I reduce the blur to four. And I would like to have a bit uh, different background color. Now I would like to create another button for the call button. So I would like to copy or duplicate. And in this one, I would like to add only one uh, icon or calling icon into the center of this button. So I'm going to run the feather icon plugin again. I will search for the call icon and click on it. And then I add this to the button that we have and remove the number. I copy the same icon and then add it to the next state and now our calling button is ready as well only thing that i need to do is just change the color to something that the user are used to it which is kind of a gray green uh, color and then for the hover state i will uh, kind of follow the same logic the prototype of the hover effect here how to create this transition between the uh, first variant which is the default version and then second variant which is basically the horror state. I'm gonna select the first variant in the dial button and then open the prototype panel. In this uh, step I'm gonna select uh, this plus uh, kind of icon here and uh, connect this variant to the second one and uh, for the type of the trigger or, or, or the way that the transition is going to be triggered uh, I'm going to select while Overing, uh, and then uh, I would uh, just set the transition type to smart animation. I'm gonna do the same thing for the uh, calling button. So on or while hovering and the smart animation. Add the button from the asset list. I did it already before, but you can get access to all the asset that you have from the asset panel on top here. Now let's run the prototype. Now we have a new feature in the Figma that uh, also released a while ago in the config 2023, in which uh, we can actually get uh, or run the prototype in the preview mode, which kind of running uh, the prototype that we made next to or within the window that we are working. This will help us to kind of see the instant um, uh, impact or effect uh, that uh, this will help us to have a better 
kind of understanding of uh, what kind of prototyping we are doing. And as you can see, the hovering state is working very well. So it's time to create the user interface of our dial page. I'm gonna now duplicate uh, this uh, button that we have, put the three of them next to each other and select all of them and use the combination key Shift A to apply the auto layout on it. I will get back to design panel and then uh, set the gap between each element inside this uh, frame to 24 and then i will duplicate all this frame uh, three times uh, let's rename the buttons to what they would be at the end so the first one is going to be the first i mean the one uh, the second one is the two and i'm going to follow this order and create the rest of the buttons now uh, I need to add uh, two more buttons. So I copy uh, the last row and uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm going to add a new button to the final row, which is the calling button and uh, change the last uh, button to zero. Now I'm selecting all the uh, button or rows that we made and I uh, use the <coughs> combination key shift A again to apply auto layout on all of them <clears throat> let's reduce the gap to 24. the last element that i would like to have is going to be uh, a text that is going to display the dial a number from the user side it's going to be the placeholder let's increase the size to 36 and uh, set the text alignment to center and overall the element should be in the center so i just position it here and now we are ready to work on the functionality logic and variables in the next step i'm going to create different variables and set each variable to uh, each of these buttons and then i will define the functionality and relation between each buttons and the display uh, dial here or the preview dial number uh, on top to do so let's create our variables variables are also one of the new features in the figma the way that you can get access to them is just click somewhere on the canvas somewhere free and then you will see the local variables in the design panel you can select or open up the variables panel and here as you can see uh, we can create new variable in this case i'm going to create a string variable and name them btn number one and the string value basically number i mean uh, a one as you can maybe predict here i'm going to create 10 more string variable for each button following the same rule so again a uh, string a variable btn number two and the value is going to be two Now it's time to define a final variable, uh, which is going to be the display number. And at the beginning, I just uh, make an empty variable, so it should be nothing inside. Uh, just if you can see here, I define also a variable btn plus, uh, which I forgot to add it here. So let's get, uh, let's close the variable panel and make a new button here as well. Now we have all the buttons, we have all the variables. It's time to write down the functionality. To do so, I'm gonna click the, or select the first uh, button and then go to the prototype panel. Here, I need to create a new interaction. We had the hover already, but I'm gonna create a new interaction. The type of interaction is going to be uh, on tap, but the transition that I would like to set here is the set variable. This is a new way that we can write down some expression here uh, to define what exactly will happen uh, or what, what are, how we can manipulate the variables that we made by clicking on a specific elements. Now I would like to do this. So whenever I click or tap on the first button or button number one, I would like that the display number change to display number plus or add to string if the value of button number one which is going to be the first one and now we are done so it's so simple the first uh, kind of line is going to be the value that we want to kind of uh, have impact on or manipulate or the variable that we want to manipulate and the second one is going to be the type of expression or the type of manipulation that we would like to do let's run the preview again and see if it's working or not as you can see when i click the uh, number one it, it does nothing and the reason is because i forgot to connect the uh, preview number to the variable that we made so let's select 
uh, the number or the preview number and go to design panel. From here in the text uh, properties panel, you can see this little option, which is saying the apply variable. I can connect a specific variable to this element by clicking on this one and selecting the uh, variable that I would like to show here. And as you can see, it's empty because at the beginning we uh, defined the uh, empty value, uh, value for the, uh, this uh, variable. Now in the preview, if I click on the one, you can see that it's working. Let's re restart the game. So yeah, at the beginning it might be a bit buggy, but if you reload it, it will work very good. But the rest of the numbers are not working because there is no functionality. So we need to repeat the same process for all individual uh, elements. So let's select the uh, button number two, go to the prototype, make a new interaction, set the variables, and again, the display number should be basically display number, add a string, uh, variable number two. We do this simply to just keep e any value that the display number already has and just add the new a new kind of value to it. If you just write down the display number two, uh, the value of the button number two, in that case, basically, whenever we click on one of this uh, button, we could just see the value of number uh, here. Again, let's follow the, this process. It might take a bit time, so uh, I will fast forward this process. Now I did all the expression, I wrote down everything, so it's time to kind of run the uh, review uh, preview again and see how everything is working. When we run the prototype, you can see we can uh, click on any of these elements and uh, write the specific number that we are looking for. So this is very easy, very convenient, and it's so kind of quick to create such a functional prototype which was kind of impossible before in the Figma. That was everything in within this video. And as you can see, it was really enjoyable process to create more complex prototyping using the new features of the Figma. I'm gonna cover the rest of the new feature in the individual videos and working on the real project. So if you are really interested to learn these new features and kind of improve your uh, skills and the way you are using the Figma, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like my videos and leave a comment for me. I really read the comments and I would like to know more about your side, which kind of videos you would like to see more in my channel. Let's learn together and see you in the next video.